Boy, they should make me springier than when I was a kid. Welcome to the Disney Scrapbook, where together we take a journey to explore Disney history from 50 years ago. My name is Nolan. Today, I thought we'd take a look at Disney's 1973 adaptation of humorous Will Stanton's Roth Out Loud novel, The Golden Evenings of Summer. This is part one of my series on Charlie and the Angel, a 95-minute live-action comedy motion picture set in the Great Depression. It was theatrically first released on March 23, 1973, subsequently released on June 27th in New York, and December 22, 1974 in the UK. This film recounts how a guardian angel visits Earth to warn Charlie, a small-town hardware storekeeper and owner, of the dangers he faces if he neglects his family of his wife and three children. In the opening scene of the film, the family is spending a pleasant evening on the front porch. Here, the family wishes upon a shooting star to visit the 1933-34 Chicago World's Fair which, along with the costumes and set, provides a convincing establishing scene indicating the period in which the film is set. This action is reminiscent of Geppetto, wishing upon a star in Disney's animated classic Pinocchio. But Charlie is not on board with spending the savings on such frivolity. After narrowly escaping three accidents, Roy, Charlie's guardian angel, appears. Somewhat confused as to how Charlie escaped certain death. Upon gaining a reprieve from the angel, Charlie attempts to mend his ways. But when he goes to withdraw money from the bank for the trip to the fair, the bank is suddenly bankrupt. So, Charlie puts his store up for sale in the hopes of raising cash, and his boys end up working for gangsters, as they too hope to raise the necessary money. Car chases, police encounters, and surprises ensue. Primetime Emmy Award nominee Roswell Rogers based the screenplay for this film on Will Stanton's hilarious book, The Golden Evenings of Summer. This would prove to be the last film that TV writer Roswell would work on. Stanton's book, The Golden Evenings of Summer, is a witty, nostalgia-filled account of his childhood growing up in the Midwest during the Great Depression. He retained fond memories of his upbringing that were represented in his writing. Of this, his second of four books. He began freelance writing after the Second World War, publishing hundreds of articles and short stories for over 40 years in various monthly magazines. Upon the publication of this book, the New York Times Review of March 21, 1971, states, His novel mythologizes his Midwestern boyhood into a garden of delights. Mr. Stanton spins a memoir that radiates charm and good humor. Interestingly, reading this novel, I was reminded of Gene Shepard's book, in God We Trust All Others Pay Cash, and likewise MGM's entertaining film, A Christmas Story. Will Stanton's book, The Golden Evenings of Summer, is written in first person, and is an absolute hilarious account of his childhood, written in a dry wit that had me belly laughing at times. <laughs> However, the language of the screenplay unfortunately did not. Disney's edition of The Guardian Angel to help convey the moral of the film live in the present served only to make what could have been a hysterical film somewhat somber, with the cloud of death always being present. The screenplay does not appear to encompass the whole book, but instead the plot appears to be based on Chapter 6, in which gangsters appear and bootlegging takes place. Only subtle references are made to the superstitions mentioned in Chapter 8, and to Pete, the handyman, in Chapter 9. 
There were several other chapters in this book that would have made hilarious scenes. Such as when mother serves cookies and serving platters for dinner to get back at father's earlier comments. Filming took place between July 14th and September 1972. At the studio lot and on a quiet residential street, lined with bungalows in Pasadena, California, where modern day TV antennas were hidden, 1930s touring cars were added, and the cars dressed in 1930s style fashion to set the scene. Disney legend, versatile producer Bill Anderson produced this film, a veteran of both motion pictures and television production. His recent theatrical credits had included The Biscuit Eater and The Million Dollar Duck, both of which I have previously reviewed on this channel. I will leave a link to these in the description below. Anderson began his career at the Disney Studios in 1943 in the production control department, eventually being elected onto the board of directors in 1960 and remaining there until 1984. The film was expertly directed by the prolific Vincent McReady, who hailed from a family of filmmakers. His father Bernard was a silent film director known for the Broadway drifter and Back to Liberty, who would ought to be an assistant director and production manager for both film and TV. Vincent's brother Bernard directed Napoleon and Samantha, a film that I have previously reviewed and I will leave a link to in the description below. His brother Joseph, although initially an assistant director, would go on to write seven scripts for Disney films. The Computer with Tennis Shoes, The Barefoot Executive, Now You See Him, Now You Don't, Super Dad, The Strongest Man in the World, No Deposit, No Return, and Hot Lead and Cold Feet. Vincent began his career in the late 1950s as an assistant director on Westwood Ho with the Wagons. After a decade of directing episodic TV, McReady got to direct his first feature film in 1968, Fire Creek, with James Stewart and Henry Fonda. Charlie and the Angel was his third feature for Disney. Ultimately, Vincent McReady would direct 13 Disney motion pictures, along with directing several multi-episode adventures for the wonderful world of Disney. Together with Norman Toka and Robert Stevenson, he became a key director for Disney. Enhancing the film is Disney legend Buddy Baker's carefully chosen and arranged popular music of the 1930s. Songs in the background include Walter Donaldson's You're Driving Me Crazy, first performed by Adele Astaire and Eddie Foy Jr. on November 18th, 1930, and Three Little Words, composed by Harry Ruby, with lyrics by Butch Kelmer, that was initially recorded on August 26, 1930, by Duke Ellington. A whimsical lyrical song, Living One Day at a Time, was specifically composed as the title music for Charlie and the Angel, by Shane Tatum and Ed Scott and bookends the film by being reprieved in the final scene. Shane Tatum, an employee of Disney's publicity department, wrote the opening theme songs for several of Disney's 1970s live-action motion pictures, including More Than Me for the 1972 film The Biscuit Eater. Thank you for staying with me for the first part about the making of Disney's motion picture, Charlie and the Angel, which will be continued in part two of this series, where we will investigate the cast, look at the stunt performances, and make a comparison with other films that have been produced by the Disney Studios. I strongly suggest that before you watch part two of my series, you go ahead and watch Charlie and the Angel for yourself. It is available on iTunes, 
YouTube, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and of course DVD. If you enjoyed this type of 50th anniversary content, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. The Disney Scrapbook channel will be producing other 50th anniversary content throughout the year. This will include reviews of Disney films, LPs, books, and theme park content. Thanks everybody for watching. TTFN, stop for now.